As some of you already know, I was running the engine on Saturday, but not for very long, and then all of a sudden I had this leak in the fuel cell, and uh, it was it was bad, and so jet fuel was running everywhere, and uh, I managed to salvage um, most of it and lost some of it on the floor and had to mop it all up type stuff, and anyway, it was a big mess. So that's what shoddy workmanship looks like uh, when you buy something, and so here I got it tilted up because there's still some fuel in it there. I didn't have anywhere else to put it once I filled up my containers uh, that I had. Uh, anyway, so that's um, something that's off to Brits now to get uh, repaired and as you can see here in this close-up this is kind of what it looks like big crack all the way along the weld they're probably three maybe four inches long it goes so um, Brits just gonna try re-welding the whole thing up and that's what happens if you're not um, if you don't do good weld so that's this is why we have Brit doing our stuff so we don't have this sort of stuff happen but you know this was a fuel cell that we bought uh, online and you know should have been good enough but can you imagine if that was in your race car and you had regular fuel in it and not uh, jet fuel that would have um, been a real fire hazard so next up I've decided to change out the upper pulleys on the uh, redrive so we can get a better ratio um, this is the existing pulley that we have there um, that has uh, 80 teeth on it and it's basically really heavy out of pig iron um, and so we're changing it up to the, what this will be is going to be out of 7075 aluminum and has um, 89 teeth that's actually with both of them displayed there so this is with just the new one um, so it's going to have 89 teeth give us a better ratio and we should be able to get the engine up to 3800 rpm because right now I can only get up to about 3500 and that'll give us the extra horsepower so we should be able to get about 400 horsepower if we can get up to 3800 rpm so now you'll see more on that uh, coming soon and due to popular demand, I've decided to get all of the hot side turbo stuff um, ceramic coated. So on Monday there, I pulled everything down and uh, did an hour long drive and an hour and something back uh, downtown there to go and take it all down to get it ceramic coated. And so here's these are all the bits before I took them down. So even the headers off there, I mean, basically everything from as soon as the um, exhaust comes out of the engine, the whole lot's going to be all ceramic coated so we'll see if that makes a performance difference and we should have that back in about a week and meanwhile Jeff's switching into part making mode so here you can see he's uh, laying the sort of primer on the um, molds here for the baggage doors so he sprays it in the mold there and so when the part pops out it's already primed and as you can see he's done the ones there for the nose gear doors and the little parachute cover door and also the cowling uh, vent um, opening there so those are all getting ready to um, be laid up. And these parts came back from powder coating. These are some of the push rods and stuff for the rudders. And this little spacers for the rudders. Those are the ones that I threaded the other day up at Brit's place. And the spacers ones that I cut the other day. And then the, there's some of the aileron control stuff there that also got powder coated there on the ends. And this is what that looks like sort of uh, mostly assembled there. So it's all fitting nice and snug there. Because that has to be a pressure tight thing from one side of that to the other. So I don't think too much air is going to get across there because it's a super, super snug fit when all that goes together. And now we're into today, Tuesday, and here's Jeff um, cutting out some of the core for uh, one of the, the parts for the nose, uh, sorry, for the main gear doors. And just cutting out some foam, sort of 45 beveling the, the side of it there. Um, so it adds the rigidity and, and just you can lay up the part right over the, or lay up the carbon right over the top. And it's just do it in one sort of hit. You don't have to make it like a two-phase or two-stage thing. And meanwhile, Zach's in the process of the final round of sanding now on this one for the rear seat mount. So once he gets all that uh, that uh, guide coat there taken off, it'll be ready for waxing. And then the guys can uh, lay that mold up. And that's the last one. So here's those uh, main gear doors there. And as you can see, Jeff's got the different bits of core there cut out and getting ready to actually lay those parts up and here's the nose gear doors so you already did those yesterday Monday and uh, out and they've just been rough trimmed right now but that's basically what they look like so just a bit of core in there and you know ultimately they're gonna have hinges put on those and so they can open and close and we need a little bit of more flat stock so we can create some um, back backing plates for the rear pressure bulkhead doors that need to be sort of fastened in and that you'll see coming soon um, so Jeff's just laying up a bit of flat stock there and I was over at Brits at the end of the day and uh, he's uh, in the process of welding up the rotor pedal so you can see he's almost done with those 
And I was going to show you all the work that I did on the elevator controls over uh, Sunday in the weekend, about you know six or seven hours of work, and uh, Windows deleted the file on me somehow, and I tried to recover it and failed. So I've basically lost about six or seven hours of work uh, just now, actually, when I was creating this video. So I'm kind of bummed about that. But anyway, that's our update for the first half of this week, and thanks again for watching.